Zell Boy Army, what is going on? It is your boy Zelonius, my beautiful friend back here, Mr. Ainsley Harriet, here today with a spicy video, another banger for you, and we're on a building site. I'm sure you're wondering why. We are helping you today learn how to get better at building your ultimate team. So, I'm going to give you lots of tips from how to start looking at how to get your team better, the type of players you should be looking for, some useful advice, tips that you might not have thought about, so you can build the best team you have, can have to be the most competitive you could possibly be. This channel is dedicated to helping you guys improve at FIFA, build a better team, use better tactics, learn the game better so you can improve and enjoy the game a lot more. If you like this type of content and you're new to the channel, every single day putting new videos out helping you guys improve at FIFA, so please subscribe, We're trying to grow as much as we can. I appreciate all the support on the channel lately. The likes, comments, let me know you're really enjoying the videos. They really do mean a lot. I appreciate the support a lot, boys. Let's have a spicy one. Boys, this is my team as of now. This video is talking about how you can build your ultimate team. You don't need to have 50 million coins to be able to get a good team. Obviously, the more coins you have, the more access you have to the proper elite top-end players. But this video is going to help you, even if you're on a smaller budget. Think about some different ways in which you can build a really good team still. I've played Ultimate Team since the first one came out, I'm a foot founder, so I know quite a bit about Ultimate Team and the types of players you should use and some helpful tips. So we're going to go through one by one different steps that I think if you apply these and get better at doing all this, you'll be able to get a far better team every FIFA. The first one is decide what formation you want to use. If, obviously sometimes people might change formation but if you know what formation you're going to use it makes it a lot easier to decide on the types of players you want I don't really even like this formation I'd rather play the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow but for me the 4-2-3-1 is the best and most effective formation in general on FIFA 20 and it has been for the last few FIFAs so I use the 4-2-3-1 so with that I go for two CDMs who are pretty good going forward, I mean Hullet's unreal at everything, Soko's decent enough going forward, but then they have to be solid defensively, I want two 5 star weak foot in my camp and striker, because that fits the meta, then I want pace, dribbling out wide, which I've got and then I've got a flat back four, so I know I need two full backs, two centre backs and then the keeper my recommendation by the way with keepers is, just always spend at least the 30-40k that a top keeper costs, because they're super cheap and they're very good an 89 to 91 keeper with a basic the nearly 99s anyway so you'd be stupid not to be invested in one of those in my opinion so you've decided on the formation you want to use that is a great start look at the tactics build a tactic that suits your team I've put lots of different tactic videos out that I think suit the game suit the meta and have helped lots of people improve probably over a hundred people now have probably told me that they've used my 4231 it's improved their results drastically in the weekend league. I'll probably do another video in the next week talking about how to use it more. But it's a very popular formation. I think I've got tactics that suit pretty much most players and are a very good platform to build from. Look at the current players you already have in your club. Do you have some unreal and tradables that suit your play style are good enough to fit in your team? So I got the 93 Red and Bappe. Last time we got extra player picks. I'm hoping I get some more this weekend um, that are useful. But this 93 Mbappe is a fantastic card. He links to the untradeable Lala I've got. So I want straight away to be able to put these two into a team. And then David Luiz is the same. So having David Luiz, he's one of the best centre backs in the game even now. So I generally use Allison in most of my teams because he's a top keeper. He fits to David Luiz. So that instantly goes into my team. And then Lala and Mbappe are so good that it'd cost a lot to get someone better than them that I want them in my team. So I'm already in a position where I want to use these cards because they're too good not to use, if that makes sense. SBCs, when it comes to deciding on how to do them, I did a video on that, that probably a few weeks ago if you go back and look at it. There's lots of things you need to think about. Will they fit my current team? How long will they last? Is this SBC even worth the price? Like There was one where Aguero's player of the month cost about the same as his screen card which was tradable and the screen card was already better don't do an SBC just because you like the player if there's an alternate version of the player that is superior 
or far better value. You need to be really careful with that. Don't use all your coins on SBC. I see so many people, when they ask me to look at the team, that the team is nearly all untradeable. When you have all your coins stuck in untradeables, when new, spicy, better cards come out, you're stuck and can't get them. It's a trap EA yeah, want you to fall into. Don't. There's nothing wrong with doing SBCs if you get a lot of use out of them, but you just have to be really careful with that. That kind of leads into the next tip I'd give. Try and plan ahead. Planning ahead, knowing where you want to take your club moving forward, helps you to long term use your coins more wisely and build a better team. Okay, new SBCs and promos might come out that you might not know about. You can't plan ahead for the promos that you don't necessarily know what cards are going to come out, but you can plan for the type of players you want to get in your team. Upgrade your team slowly. Try not keep buying and selling different players. I'm pretty bad for that, but as a content creator, it's quite useful for me to try these different players so I can talk about them for you guys. And I spend a lot of money on the game to try to compete as a pro, but then it also helps with my content. If you're not spending a lot of money on the game and you keep buying and selling players without ridiculous pack luck, which not, not many people get, you're really going to struggle, but you know, really struggle to get a good team. Buying and selling players is a very quick way to lose lots of coins because the main issue with it is, is that when you buy and sell them, you lose the 5% tax that EA charge. I don't know why that's in the game other than to just rip our coins out of us, but you lose a lot of coins and a lot of the time the players will drop in value. I wish I was really good at trading, but I don't, also I just don't enjoy trading. There's lots of people far smarter than me when it comes to the trading. Um, well, I'd recommend that if you want to join our Patreon, we have a top 50 in the world trader on there, five star foot, who gives you lots of advice and you also can get more access to me, the FIFA analyst and Jambu, free top blogs in my opinion, a bit biased, but yeah, that can help you guys improve and lots of people on that Patreon are already improving. Um, yeah, planning ahead stops you wasting coins that could be used in a smarter, better way in the future in my opinion. Objectives that they've brought this season a lot of them are a waste of time and not worth the effort, but also there are some that you can get very good cards for very cheap that if you're on a lower budget could fit into your teams or very good cards that are easy to get that long term you can easily use um, in SBCs to get some good cards for very cheap. Um, also, this is something I'd recommend that a lot of people don't think about. Loan cards don't get their loans used in friendlies. so. If you play a lot of friendlies with your friends, try and make sure you do objectives or cheap loan SBCs. Players like, I really regret I didn't do the 1919 year CR7 loan because I would have been able to use them in different friendlies. I've got Maldini, Kaka, Del Piero. Don't let the loans go. Get the If you want to use the loans in weekend leagues to get better results, great. But don't use the loan when it's got one game left because then you can't use it in friendlies anymore. Don't waste coins. Don't buy stupid cards that you know you're never going to use for more than a few games just to try them out. I get if you really want to do that and it makes it more fun for you, okay? But if you want to have the best team and the most competitive possible, competitive team possible, buying and selling players and wasting your coins on them just isn't going to work. If you watch my videos, I've got lots of videos dedicated to telling you about the best players that suit the game the meta players and I give you lots of alternate options from the very best to the very cheap budget ones. Watch those videos because they'll help you get very good players at a cheap price that will suit your team a lot. And um, Using meta players, kind of what I've just talked about, but using players that suit the game. If you build your ultimate team and you want to just use players that you find fun to use, great. The game ultimately is about having fun, but for a lot of people, and I think a lot of people who watch these videos who are trying to improve at the game, they're trying to build the most competitive team they can at the budget they're on. Five star weak foot in striker and cam in the 4-2-3-1. I would go as far to say it's essential. If you do not have that, it's going to really hinder your attack because it makes you far more predictable and it's far harder to attack and create chances when people know how you're going to attack. In defence, you might love the idea of using Bobby Moore, one of the best centre backs ever in my opinion, an English icon. But he's just not usable in the game because he's so slow. I wish EA made cards like that more usable, but whilst they're not, I stay clear of them. I don't really like this Coleman that I've got in my team, but he's in there 
because he's a free card I got from the icon swaps. He's not bad. He's pretty good. He's just a little bit slow and not quite high enough on the aggression. Generally, I would like to use Anchor on most of my centre backs, but the problem is that he needs the pace upgrade. Chem styles. Chem styles are a very, very easy way to improve your players. Look at the different chem styles that there are in the game. I've done videos about chem style tutorials, exactly what they do and what type of ones you should be using on certain players. I might do a video where I go through some meta players and tell you about the chem styles I would put on them and why. I think that may be a good video next week. But chem styles are a very good way that you can easily upgrade your players. So like this Saint Maxim, he's got 97 pace, very good dribbling, but his weakness is his finishing. It's not bad, but you want it to be higher than that. So I put a dead eye on him, gave him 15 finishing, so he now has 98, and his passing becomes elite, and it turned him into a really good camp. Out of nowhere, his finishing goes from good to elite. He, re he genuinely barely missed any good chances, and even with 99 finishing players, still missed chances. It's just the RNG on this game. But it turned him into a very clinical player, which is what I wanted. There's a lot of players that you might not consider, but when you add a chem style to them, they suddenly become very good. So, chem styles, I'll do a video talking more in depth about that next week, but they're a very good way to make your ultimate team even better. Um, icons, I, a lot of the icons are overpriced. It's another video I might do again soon, looking at some of the best value icons, updated prices on them. Icons are very good for helping you build your ultimate team because of the chemistry links they get. The general icons that I think are the best ones to use if you need them for chemistry are ones who can be central. So a centre back links a keeper, a centre back, a midfielder and a left back which is fantastic. That's four players that you can link to. A central icon in the midfield can link to maybe four or five players. The left winger, right winger, full back icons, they generally don't get as many links so they're not quite as useful in that way. I'd also argue there's a lot of pretty good wingers that are not icons anyway. But icons can bridge the gap to allow you to get different hybrid teams in that without an icon you might have really struggled to do. Because ultimately, the best teams on FIFA generally aren't going to just be one league because the best value players are across the board in different teams. So having an icon in there can really make a big difference when it comes to that. Um, and also, I just think icons are quite fun to use the different cards. And there are some pretty good value ones that go under the radar now. Um, also, using different nationalities it's going to be hard if you don't have icons in there. But trying to find players with strong links that connect well, that's a great way of building your ultimate team. So Mbappe and Neymar are good all year because of the links they have to each other. Another piece of advice I'd say that I don't think people do enough is don't be afraid to use players on eight chemistry. So often I see teams where people refuse to play a player off chem. Eight chemistry, you can see what it does. It barely changes the diff It barely changes a player. If we look here. We look at Lalan now. You can see 98 aggression, ups his pace by 5, 10 on quite a lot of defending ones. If we move Sissoko, so Lala only gets 8 chem, he loses 1 sprint speed acceleration, 3 aggression, 3 on some of the defending stats. That really is not a very big difference. It doesn't, but we don't want to do that, it does not make a big difference on him. He barely plays any different in game. The chem times when you might notice it a bit more, is if say Saint Maxim lost the chem style, so he only had eight, he might lose five finishing on his fifth plus 15. Those are the ones that matter a little bit more, and I would argue the chem styles and your players being on chem are far more important for the attackers. So if you have to play somebody off chem, don't play the attackers off chem as much as possible because the high end finishing pace stats matter more for attackers, because it's also harder to score than defend in my opinion. But don't not get a player on your team if he's really good value and fits the type of player you want. A meta player and he's cheap for your team just because he'll be on 8 chemistry. It genu genuinely, for the most part, isn't that big a deal. The last one I would say is try buy players at smart times. Don't buy a player a minute after he's come out in a primer unless it looks like a ludicrously cheap price because someone's under price. Put him way cheaper than he should be. You have to be smart about it. It's generally wise to wait a few days until after a promo has been out for when the player's prices start to drop. That is generally when you will get the best value for players, or maybe during lightning rounds. Again, don't keep buying and selling lots of players because it's not going to help your team long term. 
Boys, I think that's lots of useful tips that are going to help you improve drastically at building your ultimate team. Let me know if there's anything I've missed out on, any questions you've got for me. I appreciate all the support on the videos lately. If you like this video, please like and comment or subscribe if you're new around here. Appreciate you boys. Have a good one. Good luck this week in league.